Can police search your RV without a warrant? Or are you protected by the Fourth Amendment? This is a question that's thrown around a lot because the answer isn't necessarily clear. And today, we're going to be diving into this conundrum. Hello everyone, I'm Tom, and this sweet pup that might pop her head into the frame is Luna. My wife, Caitlin, and I have been traveling since 2015 in RVs full time, and we share a lot of our journeys right here on this YouTube channel, but we also publish daily content over on our website, mortonsonthemove.com, all about traveling and RVing. Today, we're going to be diving into one of those pieces of content right here on this YouTube channel about if police can search your RV. Now, I'll put a link in the description below to the article if you want to follow along or read more. All right, before we get going, because this involves the law, I'm going to say a little bit of a disclaimer here. We are not lawyers, and none of the information provided herein should be taken as legal advice. Statements may not reflect the current state of the law and are not intended to provide any legal advice, guidance on any litigation, or commentary on any pending case or legislation. That being said, we have a general understanding of the topic at hand, and we're going to share our thoughts on it. So before we talk about police searching RVs, let's talk briefly about how police searches normally work. In most circumstances, a police officer is going to need to have a warrant to search you or your property. This is because the Fourth Amendment is protecting us from unreasonable search and seizure and provides that balance of power. The key word in the Fourth Amendment is unreasonable because there are circumstances where there is reason to believe that a search could and should be performed. To get a search warrant, a police officer needs to present before a neutral third party, usually a judge or magistrate, and present their evidence to believe they have a reasonable cause to get a search warrant. This neutral third party then has to determine if the evidence they've prevented is a reasonable cause for a warrant and can issue it. The whole purpose here is that this judge is upholding the Constitution. Warrants are not always given, however, and a police officer cannot legally make the search, or if they do, it may be unlawful, and any evidence that they did find would probably have to be thrown out in a court of law. Now, there are exceptions that allow a police officer to make a warrantless search. And one of the biggest one is motor vehicles. Under the Fourth Amendment, where there is probable cause to believe a vehicle contains evidence of criminal activity, an officer may lawfully search any area of the vehicle in which evidence might be found. This motor vehicle exception was first established in the Supreme Court in 1925 in a case, Carroll versus the United States, and it allows officers to search a motor vehicle without a warrant if they have probable cause for two primary reasons. Number one is that when you are in a vehicle on a public roadway, there is less concern of privacy. This is considered really a public place. Secondly is the fact that evidence could so easily be removed by simply having driven away. And this is where in lies the confusion with an RV. So is your RV protected from an unreasonable search by the Fourth Amendment? Well, this is where RVs kind of fall into a little bit of a gray area because they are both dwellings and vehicles. Let's first examine if RVs are considered a dwelling. According to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, they are not considered a dwelling. RVs in most places are considered temporary housing and should not be lived in for more than 90 days. This doesn't mean that you can't live in RVs full time. We sure have for a long time, but you can't actually consider it a dwelling on, in most places. Like a, a city will not allow you to park an RV and call it a legal dwelling. So that doesn't really help us out much with figuring out if an RV is protected as a dwelling or a legal residence. Over the years, a few cases have been raised about this specific point, uh, particularly one in 1985 of California v. Kearney, where they attempted to really find that distinction of uh, what and when an RV is considered a dwelling and when it is considered a motor vehicle, because it really is both. The court kind of looked at a number of different circumstances, say, was the RV on a public road? Was the RV easily able to be driven away? These are the kind of things that actually a police officer needs to decide if they can actually make a search. In general, the consensus is that if the RV is being used primarily as a vehicle at the time, so you're driving down the road and your slides are in and you get pulled over, it's definitely gonna be considered a motor vehicle and a police officer has every right to search it if they have reasonable cause to believe 
that a search is warranted. However, if the RV is set up in a way that's going to make it much more difficult to move, then a police officer should probably get a warrant. And it's still going to be a little bit of a gray area whether any evidence that they find without a search warrant in that circumstance could be admitted in a court or not. But if it appears like the RV is really set up, it's hooked up, slides are out, jacks are down, in this circumstance, you really should be protected and you shouldn't have a police officer able to make a search without a warrant. The major exception to this, of course, is if you give permission. If an officer asks if they can make a search, and they typically will, and you say yes, then that search would be legal. So I'm hoping that most of you are not conducting illegal activities with your RV, and this really is never going to be a problem. But what about circumstances when a police officer could legally search your RV whether you want it or not. Well, there's a handful of circumstances. We have never actually had our RV searched. However, if you are crossing borders, it is very possible that they may search your RV. It's considered a vehicle at that time, and they could come aboard. We've seen many RVs pulled to the side and police officers or border agents going through and looking just to check on everything and make sure they're not crossing with anything that they shouldn't. An RV, unlike a commercial truck, isn't going to have a lot of papers or documentation saying what's on board, and it's a very large vehicle, so it can raise a little bit of suspicion at border crossings. In general, however, police don't really have a lot of reason to search an RV unless it appears in some way that could be harboring some sort of evidence. Typically, if your RV is in decent shape and parts aren't falling off it, it's really not gonna raise any suspicion in general public roads. So what about a police stop in general in an RV? Is it any different than a standard motor vehicle? It really isn't. In general, just handle it the same way that you would if you were in a car. Stay calm, only answer the questions that they ask you. If you're fumbling and, and jittery, then it's going to raise some suspicion. Keep your hands on the wheel and just be polite. It is possible that you could be pulled over for a few different circumstances than you might in a car. Uh, an RV like the one we're in currently weighs over 50,000 pounds and we could be overweight in certain roads or things like that. These are things that you really should know and make sure you don't exceed, but it is possible you could be pulled over for some overweight, oversized restriction type things where you might not have that issue in a car. In general, however, we're typically driving a lot slower in RVs and if you're traveling in places where RVs are pretty common, the police typically just ignore most of them. So to summarize, RVs are a little bit of a gray area. They're both a vehicle and a dwelling and it's really really going to depend on how it's being used at the time, whether a search can be legally performed without a warrant. I'm not going to be able to tell you what that circumstance would ever be, and the police officers are going to have to make that decision at the time and based on any local ordinances or laws around it. The last takeaway as well is that ignorance is not an excuse for not knowing your rights. It's important to have this general concept in mind because if you say deny and fight a warrantless search, when you are on a public roadway, things could end up a lot worse for you. We've known circumstances where people have pushed back on a police officer just because they didn't know what they could or couldn't do, and things have ended up a lot worse for them. So I'm glad you've joined us today to get a general understanding of this topic, but hopefully you will never have to even think about it or encounter this circumstance. As always, thank you so much for joining us here on Morton's On The Move. I'd love to encourage you to head over to our website, mortonsonthemove.com, and sign up for our newsletter. We'll send an email out anytime we publish a new piece of content, and you'll also get subscribed to our weekly comics, where we produce a new comic about RVing or traveling every Sunday. If you haven't already, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, be safe, and we will see you down the road.